Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Howdy, friends. Cheech here with Fly Fish Food. Um, been playing around with some pretty cool stuff at the Vice lately. And uh, we're going to show you a way to customize your cone heads or your, you know, any type of metal that you have on the Vice or on your on a fly, a bead head, cone head, barbell eyes. Um, and basically, we're going to show you how to tie this fly. So you can see it's got a lot of bass inspiration with the rubber. It's going to move like crazy. But if you look real closely, you see that the cone head and the eye are all the same color. And it's this really nice dark olive with gold fleck in it. We're going to show you how to do that. There are a whole bunch of different colors you can do and make a really durable finish. Um, but basically, right now I've got a 2461 Daiichi in the in the vise, and I'm going to secure that with 030 lead, okay, or lead-free wire, whatever you've got is fine. Just with enough wraps to make it interesting. It's really not helping to weight the fly. We're just using this to mash it up against the cone to have it sit right okay so we've got it right here the next step is we're going to take this out of the vise and we're going to put some powder paint on it so here's a cool one that i did that's uh kind of like a blue fleck olive uh, you can see how the paint kind of covered up the whole thing and then this one's one of the coolest colors we have it's a kind of a blue fleck black um but we're going to do this same color on, on this fly. So here's how it goes. Okay, I've got one of these emergency lamps here, or emergency candles. Uh, you can use a heat gun as well. Um, and I've got a little bit of my powder paint just in a little uh, container. It doesn't really matter how you have it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm going to heat it up just slightly. If I put it over the flame too long, the lead will melt. So about five seconds on each side. And then I'm just gonna lightly come over here and dab it in there and then shake most of the paint off. Okay, I think I did a pretty good job. And then I'm gonna come back over here and reheat it and that will kind of smooth all that paint out. Then you can see that we have the eye that's starting to close up. So I'm just going to take a bodkin and poke that out. Once I have the eye poked out, I'll put it over the flame again to kind of even out any bumps in the paint that I've created. Now, we're, once we're to this point, you've got to take it and bake it in the oven 300 degrees for 20 minutes. If you don't bake it, the, the paint will chip off. Okay, once I've baked the paint, it's time to tie the fly. And this fly is a very simple pattern. Um, I've got uh, Danville's 210 denier in black. And we'll need the thicker thread once we get to the head of this fly. <clears throat> the tail is going to be Nature Spirit Prime Marabou in dark olive. Um, you can use the other stuff as well if you, if you have it or prefer it. Um, but I'm just going to pull some off the, the stem. And once I pull the clump off the stem, it'll have a bunch of this nastiness. So I'll just come in here and cut it off. And this is going to be a, a river pattern mostly for me. So for me, that means I'm just going to tie a little bit longer tail on it. It's got to be a lot more full than that, so we'll keep building it up. That looks pretty good like that. The next thing we're going to do is just add a little bit of highlight flash. And so I've got just uh, Ice Dub in gold. It's one of my favorite 
materials right now, this gold ice stuff, and I'm just going to kind of take a clump of it and just kind of mash it around the hook. Make a few light wraps, distribute it around if you need to. Wrap it a few more times and then pull those fibers back and wrap on top of itself. So, you know, we're not looking for anything perfect here, just a little bit of highlight color in the tail. And if you want, you can come in here and clean it up just a bit. All right. Um, for the body, I'm going to use Hairy Ice Dub. And instead of using a brown color, I'm actually going to, or I mean a, an olive color, uh, I'm going to use olive brown. So... That's my color that I'm going to use for the body, and I'm going to stick that into a dubbing loop. All right, we've got our dubbing loop all spun up. So we'll wrap that forward. So it's a pretty buggy body. So now I'm just going to pick it out just a little bit. You could use chenille for the body as well for this. I just wanted the little bit more buggy effect of the dubbing. And now I'm going to take some of the gold ice dub and create a ball right in the front of that body. And the reason for that is when I tie in these rubber legs I want a pretty drastic bump behind those to make them flare out the way I want. And this can be pretty messy right here. But as you can see, I'm it's kind of hard to see, but I'm leaving a little bit of a, a space be, behind the bead and the or the cone and the, the body of the fly. Okay, and again, I'm just going to come in here and lightly tease some of those gold fibers back over the body. That's probably plenty right there. So, I can tell what you're thinking right now. This really doesn't look good right now. Really messy fly. And it's kind of by design. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these silicone streamer legs, silly leg type material. And I'm going to take a tab of these and I'm just going to take, you know, kind of find the middle of the tab and pull those apart. So I've got basically half of a tab. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and cut it in half. So now I have two little mini tabs. And this is something that I learned when tying bass jigs quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie one of these on the side, one of these on the other side, and then we'll trim the the, the tag ends and call it good. Um, but one thing you can do is when you tie this in, um, you tie these tabs in and then you can manipulate the rubber all the way around the, the hook shank. So don't worry about getting it too perfect the first time. So two kind of loose wraps on one side. Then the side nearest me. Kind of the same program. And then I'm going to cinch down and that's going to pull those in underneath that cone. Now I need to find a spot where I can get in between the two right there. Now I've advanced my thread right behind the cone. Okay, at this point, or after the whip finish, either way, you come in here and you cut that additional tab off. And it's okay if your rubber legs are a little bit uneven. 
And you can see I, I've got a, a bare spot right here under the hook. So I'm just going to take those rubber legs and kind of pull them. And they'll go right where I want them to go. I'll just distribute those around a bit and then throw a whip finish on there. So that's really going to have a lot of action in the water. Um, and also you'll see you'll, we've got some tabs that are still kind of stuck together a little bit. You can just take your bodkin and run it through those and they'll separate a little bit more of a bald spot. As a final step, you just uh, run some head cement down in there. And if you just put it right on top of that junction, it'll run right down in where you need it. And then just wipe off the rest. Anyway, it's a cool way to customize a, a cone head with powder paint. Give it a try. Let us know if it works.